Hey guys, again, we want to just welcome each and every one to our Wednesday night midweek service uh, here at Calvary Chapel downtown. We want to especially uh, uh, praise the Lord for the guys at home watching by uh, online. And uh, what a great thing it is that uh, uh, if you can't make it, uh, they're, they're watching by home. But just a couple of uh, reminders and announcements, guys. The Thanksgiving holiday coming up tomorrow. We want to keep in prayer all the ministry taking place on the upcoming holiday tomorrow. Our fellow ministers at the River of Life Mission, as well as the Stevedos for Christ, uh, both who we partnered with in their annual outreaches, guys. It's a tremendous opportunity. Uh, again, we know that the mission is just serving just hundreds and hundreds of uh, meals pretty much on a daily basis, guys. And I know that the Stevedores will be taking out uh, care packages and bentos uh, out into the highways and byways down in the Honolulu Harbor area. So keep those guys in prayer. And uh, again, uh, I, I think it's uh, all, all hands on deck and it's a busy evening tonight. So, uh, you know, as we, uh, as we go our ways after the service, fire up some prayers for them, guys. And uh, again, prayer for our nation, you know, with our presidential election still unresolved and in limbo. Uh, the ramifications one way or the other will be far reaching so continue to pray for god's best and what god has planned and his very best plans and purposes we cannot second guess the lord or give him directional prayers but again uh, he really truly is uh in charge and he's still seated upon the throne guys uh you know uh keep one uh, one another in prayer and you know we've had prayer requests coming in you know from the mainland and from uh throughout the, uh, the islands here and we know that uh, a lot of things are ongoing and you know even with the holiday a lot of people are going through times of difficulty and things uh, you know people are affected by the COVID people are you know infected with the COVID and uh, people are getting uh, you know the, the normal things go on people are in traffic accidents and people undergoing treatment for various diseases and things come up quickly and you know unexpectedly so again uh, keep keep each other in prayer and again uh, uh, it's a good time to think one of the guys on Saturday mornings uh, uh, he always used to uh, uh, remind us hey, keep the guys in the hospital you know he, he'd always wave towards Queens Hospital and though he didn't have anybody in there I don't think he did but he always knew that hey there were a lot of people there in the hospital that needed prayer and you know in, in his mind in his heart you know, the general prayers for the, the folks over there, you know, would always be welcome. So, you know, he really had a heart for those going uh, through these things. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of things ongoing as the Lord leads you, uh, continue to uh, keep in prayer. I don't know, I have a little ongoing prayer list in my Bible that I carry around in my backpack. And, you know, I'm, I'm constantly adding names and stuff like that of people. And, you know, as requests come in, as uh, things come up, you know, we put those names on those prayer lists. And uh, uh, I, I personally, I'll review those lists and, you know, on occasion, just pray and, you know, check off the answers to prayer. And uh, and uh, some, uh, you know, are ongoing and uh, it's a continual thing. So uh, remember uh, your prayer lists and uh, uh, keeping those folks uh, in prayer. You know, you know, a lot of, a lot of things are ongoing in California. Uh, some of the churches, they, they've been... Uh, shut down and open up and shut down again and you know a lot of things ongoing so it's a it's a, a tough tough time but why don't we pray again before we get started and father god we do again want to thank you lord for this evening we thank you for those here tonight lord in our sanctuary lord we thank you for those watching uh via the internet lord and we thank you for all the uh, prayer support and all the love uh uh, towards us and basically really uh, we want to give all that love to you Lord and we give you the thanksgiving and the honor and glory all the things ongoing in our midst as the prayer requests come in and the things ongoing around us the various ministries taking place and uh, we just want to commit these things to you Lord and we want to focus our our attention upon you this night Lord and uh, see what you have for us and how you might speak to us your great precepts, uh, your great instructions for our lives, Lord. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Bless now we pray as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, guys, uh, last week we, uh, we uh, 
Uh, we actually went through chapter 49 of Genesis. Uh, we're going to get, get through Genesis 50 tonight. But we'll pick up our study uh, tonight in uh, chapter uh, 49, verse 28. Chapter 49, verse 28. And all these of the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, and this, will, uh, this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. He blessed them, every one of them, with a blessing appropriate to him. Uh, you know, we found Jacob pronouncing a blessing upon each and every one of his sons, which uh, would uh, comprise the twi uh, 12 tribes of Israel, guys. Notice that the blessing was not a broad brush, one size fits all, but each was uniquely individual. You know, as we went through the earlier uh, uh, the uh, uh, beginning portions of chapter 49, we saw that, uh, again, it wasn't a general thing, but it was very uniquely individual. For each one, it was a unique, appropriate blessing. And what I'm so amazed is, as we go through this book of beginning, the book of Genesis, we see how God is so gracious, because he takes a bunch of guys, and they, they have uh, their own little quirks, they have their own little bents, they have their own little problems and their own tendencies that, you know, lead them astray and sometimes out and out rebellious and sometimes out and out sinful. And God uh, loves them equally as uh, he loves each one of us. And, you know, God uh, takes uh, these people and he works with them and he receives them and accepts them just as we are, uh, as they were. And he accepts us just as we are. And it's so amazing that uh, the tribes of Israel, they weren't perfect people. The, the leaders of the, uh, the nation of Israel, they weren't far from perfect, guys. And God uh, uses imperfect people in this imperfect world to do his perfect work uh, in us and to those around us. In that, I'm so amazed and so blessed at his grace. And uh, again, you can kind of think that uh, sometimes the uh, blessing of Jacob was pretty straightforward and you know it, it was very pointed uh, as far as pointing out some of the the good and the bad features within the heart and life of the people but he says here that he blessed them each one with a blessing appropriate to him and he charged them and he's as he said to them i am about to be gathered to my people verse 29 bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of ephron and hittite the cave that is in the field of uh Mac Machpelah, uh, which is uh, before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham brought along with the field from Ephron the Hittite for a uh, burial site. There he buried Abraham and his wife uh, Sarah. They buried Isaac and his wife Rebekah. And there I buried Leah uh, in this field uh, and the cave that is in it uh, uh, purchased from the sons of Heth. Guys, the last thing that Jacob did was to charge his son with his final wishes. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like, hey, I, I charged, I, I, you know, I blessed you guys appropriate, in an appropriate manner. Now, these are my last wishes, uh, my final wishes uh, uh, to be uh, at the time of his death. Uh, and his, uh, his final wishes was to be taken back home to Canaan. Now, early on in chapter 12, when the Lord had uh, directed Jacob's uh, grandfather, Abram, to venture forth from his country to a, uh, a land promised to him by the Lord, the land was Canaan. You know, the Canaan land was the promised land. The Canaan land was the land that people have uh, fought over and lived and died for. The K land of Canaan is still one uh, in the forefront of uh, many people's eyes. And uh, again, uh, it was the land that uh, God had promised uh, to Abram. Uh, to his sons was this charge, take me back home where my wife is buried. He was speaking about Leah. And my mother and father are buried there, Isaac and Rebekah. And here my grandfather and grandmother, Abraham and Sarah, are, uh, are buried. He says, take me home, you know, and uh, I want to go home. I want to be with my family. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we made comment about that earlier that... Uh, uh, people want to go back home. I told you guys about my um, my friend. Uh, he had moved uh, his family. He and his family had moved up to the Big Island in Kamuela. And uh, he told me that, uh, you know, I didn't realize, but his grandma had passed away. And uh, he told me that uh, uh, that it, 
towards the end of her life, she always told him, I want to go back home, I want to go back home. And I asked him, is it to that old neighborhood? And he says, well, it's in the old neighborhood, but she's even more specific, calling out the very lane in this little obscure little lane in one corner of the neighborhood. And I said, gee, I never realized that grandma was really had a lot of history in that particular neighborhood. And, and he said, yeah, that's where she was born. And she was raised, she and her sister. And uh, uh, the two sisters didn't move far from their original home. They moved a couple blocks away and they stayed in their neighborhood. They lived in their neighborhood. They raised their kids, I believe, in the neighborhood. And uh, they, they, they ended up, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the end of their life, uh, remaining you know there in the neighborhood and uh, it's a it's a strange thing to think that hey you know you're way back home or you want to go back home uh, years ago I was watching public television and uh, there was a uh, uh, one of the elders from the Hawaiian community he was up in this area of the uh, of the west side called Palehua Palehua on top of the mountain and you know, it looked just like a land of weeds and uh, overgrown weeds and dirt and rocks and so on and so forth. But when you looked at the, 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 the particular scenery from uh, above, he says that, hey, this is the big island of Hawaii. This is the chain of the Hawaiian Islands, the uh, eight or nine islands, I believe. But he says that uh, it, it, it shows from the point, the very southmost point of the big island, a straight shot back to the island of Tahiti. And he said that the old Hawaiians put this map in the ground and uh, because you know why? They didn't want to forget their way back home. And I thought that was so fascinating. You know, you, you always would, would want to think that, hey, I hope no land developers go up there and disturb this art archaeological artifact to where uh, he, he, he really stressed that point that they, um, the old Hawaiians didn't want to forget their way back home. And they considered that hey, Tahiti was their home. Tahiti was where they ventured out from. The islands of Hawaii were where they settled. But they always remembered, remembered where back home was. And so it was with Jacob. He says, take me back home. Take me back to Canaan land. I want to go back home. I want to be with my kin. And when Jacob finished charging his sons, verse 33, he drew up his feet into the bed and uh, breathed his last. And he was gathered to his people. After all was said and done, guys, Jacob uh, gave his uh, last breath and he died. And uh, though his life had been, was peppered with hardship, guys, we saw Jacob from a, a dirty, rotten hill catcher. You know, that's what Pastor Chuck would always call Jacob, that dirty, rotten hill catcher. And uh, we saw Jacob taken from that dirty, rotten hill catcher uh, to, grow, uh, to grow into uh, a grow in the Lord and mature in his faith. Uh, to one who was filled with faith and blessed by God. You know, not that he wasn't blessed uh, as a young man before God, but you know, a lot of times God is working out those rough edges in our hearts and lives. And for, for many of us, it takes years and years for those rough edges to get chipped off. And uh, with Jacob and like, like most of us guys, God is doing a work, an ongoing work. God is uh, that master craftsman. God is that one uh, he's the potter, we're the clay guys, and you know, he's making us and molding us and shaping us into vessels fit for his, uh, for his use and for his honor and for his glory. And again, uh, it's a good thing to remember that, you know, that good work that he started in us will continue until the day of Christ Jesus. Chapter 50, then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. Joseph commanded as his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So his physicians embalmed Israel. Now 40 days were required for it. For such uh, was a period required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him for 70 days. You know, I wish I had a little bit more time to get more into the, the, the numbers of the thing. But, uh, you know, we see here Joseph was overcome by grief. And uh, he was weeping over his dad and uh, uh, just uh, broken hearted. He then commanded uh, those in his charge to prepare his father's uh, body. And 40 days was the period of time to embalm the body. And 70 days was a period of mourning. It was a quite long period to prepare the body. It was an even longer period 
of mourning over the death of, of his loved one. And I think that because Joseph was so well respected and Joseph was so uh, revered in the land of Egypt that, you know, uh, um, uh, most of the people were probably overcome and overtaken with grief because, you know, they saw their beloved uh, second in command of the nation of uh, Egypt uh, hurting because of the loss of his dad. Here in uh, verses uh, 4 to 6, and when the days of mourning for him had passed, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your sight, please speak to Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, a saying, Behold, I am about to die, and in my grave, uh, which I dug for myself in the land of Cain, and there you shall bury me. And therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. And Pharaoh said, Go up, bury your father, as he made you swear. Uh, uh, Joseph, with all respect uh, toward the Pharaoh, uh, who had treated he and his family so well, now uh, respectfully requests his permission. There was no familiarity with Joseph. He gave Pharaoh all the honor that was his as commander-in-chief of uh, the nation of, uh, the, the nation of uh, Egypt. And again, he gave him his full re uh, uh, a respectful request and permission to escort Jacob back to Canaan for his burial. Joseph took nothing for granted. He extended respect and courtesy to his earthly master. And you know, somebody once said that, oh, we're much too familiar with each other at my workplace because we're always sniping and we're getting into personal things and little quarrels and so on and so forth. We show lack of respect and uh, personal respect and personal space for people when we go where we aren't uh, supposed to go. But again, here's this, uh, this one thing, Joseph never lost his respect. And he, he knew that um, the Lord had used Pharaoh to, uh, to elevate him from the prison uh, into a place where, uh, you know, he was second in command to Pharaoh himself. And, uh, uh, you know, Pharaoh still had that ability uh, to do that, and uh, Pharaoh was like a like like God, and uh, uh, standing uh, you know ab above above Joseph, and I think that we can never become too familiar with the Lord and take God for granted. You know, when people tell you, oh, that the man upstairs, and they said, oh, what man upstairs? You mean the true and the living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth? Some people speak with so much familiarity, or al although they, not, they don't know God and they don't honor him and revere him as he should. And I, I think that uh, we should always give God the honor and glory that it's so rightfully his. Uh, in 7 and 8, he, he goes on. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of the household, all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the household of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's household. They left only their little ones and their flocks and their herds in the land of Goshen. You know, it's kind of interesting that right here, um, he left a lot of his family and their flocks and herds back in Goshen. It wasn't like that, hey, we're going to leave, we're taking everything with us. But we really are coming back. You know, we're not deserting the ship. We're not fleeing from you, Pharaoh. It was not like uh, 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 in the time of the Exodus when the Pharaoh, the new Pharaoh said, hey, you can go worship your God, but you got to leave all of your flocks, all of your families, all your little ones back. And it was like the new Pharaoh was almost holding them uh, 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 hostage. But here the, far, the, the Joseph willingly said, hey, we're leaving our families and the little kids and our possessions behind. But it was a very large entourage of officials and leaders and family members who went up to uh, Canaan. Uh, like dignitaries and heads of state guys, Jacob was treated with all honor. And really, um, it was a token of honor for Joseph as the Egyptians uh, revealed him uh, for all he had, uh, all he had uh, done in the time of the famine. Guys, remember, uh, 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 I, I think it's Psalm 105. Psalm 105 just kind of uh, um, reviews all that went on and... Uh, uh, how all these things went on in the land of Joseph and how God raised up a man there. And it's, uh, uh, it's kind of neat because in Isaiah 19, there's a prophetic word that speaks of uh, Egypt uh, worshiping the Lord, guys, uh, in these last days, uh, that Egypt is going to come 
uh, to the saving grace of, of God, to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I, th I thought that was very fascinating. But uh, uh, in verse 9, they went up with him, both chariots and horsemen. It was a very great company. And when it came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, they lamented there with a very great and sorrowful lamentation. And he observed seven days of mourning for his father. Now when the inhabitants of the lands, the Canaanites saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous mourning for the Egyptians. Therefore it was named uh, Abel uh, Mazarim, which is beyond the Jordan. Uh, as the great company uh, came up from Egypt, guys, all the peoples of the land realized it was a great time of mourning for this great man, this man Jacob. And they recognized this, it was a time of mourning for a great chief, a great father. And I think that a lot of the, um, the leaders um, uh, in the Middle East, hey, they call them chief, you know, they're like a chief. And they're like the father of this great company, the father of the family. It was a particularly emotional time for the party traveling to the burial site. And we know that at, at times uh, some people get very, very emotional. Um, uh, some are very unemotional, some uh, hold back the tears and there's not much emotion, but some are very uh, uh, open in their emotions and they don't hold back, they show it. And, uh, uh, you know, I remember somebody telling me when they were growing up uh, on the homestead on the big island, they said that, Oh, some of these families, when you know, when the family member dies, they knew that it was it was so painful because the the weeping and the wailing that you know the neighbors could hear. You know, the sound of the weeping filled the neighborhood, and everybody knew that this family was hurting. And uh, again, uh, uh, this this took place with uh, with Jacob being brought back into the land of Canaan. The people of the land recognized that hey, this guy must have been. Uh, you know, some uh, good guy, because look at all these Egyptians, look at all the mourning that's going on. He must have been a great leader, a great father of his uh, family, of his tribe. Uh, here uh, in 12, and thus his sons did for him as he had charged them. For the sons carried him to the land of Canaan and, and buried him in a cave uh, in the field of uh, Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham had bought, along with the field for uh, the burial site from Ephraim. Uh, the Hittite. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers, and all who had gone up uh, uh, with him to bury his father. After um, uh, interning, interring his father in that burial site, guys, we see that Joseph and his brothers returned to Egypt. It was, uh, was kind of like, you know, there was closure. And I think that what this COVID epidemic has uh, done a lot of the uh, memorial services, a lot of the funeral services and the celebrations of life have all been postponed, canceled, or become private. Uh, we here in Hawaii, it seems that uh, uh, the celebration of life is that exactly. Uh, you know, when you go to some, uh, some celebrations and uh, after the service, you know, usually a meal is uh, shared with one another. And you know, you, you might hear this comment that, and as one person is telling uh, one of the family members, oh, your mother would have been so pleased because everybody's enjoying themselves, everybody's enjoying the food, everybody's enjoying the fellowship and you know, the company of one another. And you know, it's a time of uh, remembering uh, not only the good things of the person who, is, uh, who has died, but it's a time that uh, 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 relationships can be reacquainted and you know, sometimes just sharing a meal and sitting down and uh, it becomes a time that we share a bit of one another. Not only all the good things that the person had done, and uh, but you can kind of think that, oh, Auntie uh, really loved uh, when people came and ate and enjoyed. And I think she would have been really pleased. Uh, uh, you know, we've had some celebra uh, celebrations of life at our, our old chapel and it was like that exactly. The people came and the, the, they, they wept and they worshiped and they heard the word and the word brought some comfort, but it brought closure. Uh, it brought closure to where um, 
and we can move on from now. This is what the guys did. But I think that because uh, right now, because of the COVID, it's not really possible, you know, for a lot of things. There's no closure. There's not a real closure. It's still left open, and uh, uh, you wish that uh, there would have been a little bit of closure, but that's just how it is, guys. But, you know, here we find uh, Joseph and his brothers uh, return to uh, Egypt, and when Joseph's brothers... Uh, uh, verse 15, they saw that uh, his, their father was dead. Uh, they said, what if Joseph should bear a grudge against us and pay us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? You know, here are all the fears and all the thoughts of the wrong they had done to their kid brother. Uh, so they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father charged uh, before he died saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, uh, Please forgive, I beg you, the transgression of your brothers and their sin. Uh, did, uh, uh, for they did wrong, and now please forgive the transgression of your servants before God, of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. You know, the most, uh, um, uh, one of the most important passages right here is that Joseph wept when his brothers came. And they told him all of this right away, knowing their father was now gone. Joseph's brothers thinking that there was nothing stopping Joseph uh, to do them harm. And, you know, really, again, all the fear, all the panic, all the worry, all the guilt. And you know, you know what, guys? Sometimes the enemy, he's the master of the head game. And he loves nothing more to place that guilt upon us. He likes nothing more than to place us in a place of fear, uh, of being fearful and so on and uh, again I can I think that this is what uh, uh, where they were at they uh, they had thoughts that they, Joseph is going to bring retribution and payback and all the harm that they had done to him you know and the world has these things their payback is a blank you know what it is yeah and that's the, the way the world thinks and that's what they were thinking hey, our brother's going to come down hard on us and it's going to be payback seeing right through their deceptive motives joseph wept his heart was broken because they didn't uh receive uh that 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 uh that he had said hey i forgive you guys you know I, I, it wasn't you. It was really God working all things out. He grieved for his brother's hardness of heart that they still not, did not receive his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness. And Joseph was like in, in the place of God. You know, he extended all that grace. And what is grace, guys? It's unmerited favor. And he extended this favor. He, his brothers didn't merit that favor. But like God, God extends that unmerited favor for us. And, you know, we can kind of think that, um, you know, there are guys, I'm sure you've met some people that say, oh, God can't forgive me for what I've done. And they won't tell you this, but they, they really, they put up a barrier because they think what they did was so heinous that God is not able to forgive them. And this is what, uh, uh, this is what I think grieved his heart, uh, 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 Joseph's heart, and it grieves God's heart. Uh, 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 they did not receive his grace and mercy and his forgiveness. Like some who feel again, God cannot forgive them. Joseph realizing uh, uh, what his brothers uh, were up to, he still, uh, uh, they still were bothered by the guilt and the shame and the fear. They were trying to uh, do damage control. You heard that term, yeah? Well, they tried to do damage control. And this is exactly what they were doing. They said, oh, our father said this. Our father said that they uh, did that, and you know the father was dead. They couldn't go back. Eh, he couldn't go back to his dad and say, "Hey, dad, did you tell these guys this?" No. So you know, uh, again, but Joseph wept. He really grieved in his heart, and I think that God is like that. When we don't receive His forgiveness, we don't receive His grace. We think that we got to earn our way back or do the damage control and come back. You know, God is not like that. You know, He forgives and. You know, he cast the, those things out into the deepest part of the seas. Uh, his brothers came also and fell down and says, uh, Behold, we are your servants, verse 18. And they pleaded, uh, they pledged their lives to him as slaves. In other words, hey, we're willing to give our life to you. Uh, if just keep us alive. Don't kill us. Don't off us, you know. As if uh, payback, uh, it was payback for their transgressions. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for am I in God's place? And really he was, you know. And uh, 
But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it good in order to bring about this present result. You know, isn't that so neat that herein lies this beautiful passage, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And sometimes people want to do bad and hurt us and harm us, and yet uh, this is exactly what his brothers did, but God meant it for good, for the preservation of the family. They would have never survived the famine. They would have never made it without God's provision through uh, their brother Joseph, uh, who they had sold into slavery. You know, So uh, again, it's a tremendous thing. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them, comforted them and spoke kindly to them. You know, isn't that just like uh, the Lord? You know, at times when we're panicking, at times when we feel filled with guilt and condemnation and shame, God sends His Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes alongside, He comforts us, He speaks kindly uh, to them, and He does to us too. He says, don't worry, don't be afraid, I will provide for you and for your little ones. And you know, at, at times we think that, oh God, you provided all this way, but what about tomorrow? You know, what about the day after this? And we don't know where provision is going to come from. We don't know how we're going to make it. And at times, uh, if I don't have my, if I lose my job, I lose my benefits, what's going to happen? And, you know, God has not brought us this far to leave us, nor forsake us. And at times we know all the verses, at times, yet in, inside of us, we still, there's that little bit of fear, you know, hey, God, what if this, what if that? And, you know, what about this? And uh, how are we going to do it, you know? Uh, but again, uh, The Lord, uh, the Lord uh, bringing assurance and reassurance to our lives. Guys, you know, the only thing, you know, when guys are going through the times of difficulty, they're going through a illness or financial trouble, all we can do is bring a little bit of hope and a little bit of reassurance and assurance to them that God, you know, God uh, is there. And, uh, 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 you know, again, it's a time that uh, uh, we can reassure and give hope and Pastor Darrell used to always say, leave them with a little bit of hope. Leave them with hope. Leave people with hope, not condemnation and not a sense, surely, of hopelessness. But God is a God that uh, would give us his hope. Now, Joseph uh, stayed in Egypt. He and his father's household. Joseph lived 110 years, verse 22. And Joseph saw the third generations of Ephraim's son. And all the sons of Mature, the sons of Manasseh, were born on Joseph's knees. God gave Joseph a long and fruitful life. And you, you can kind of think that, well, that, uh, his father lived to about 147 years old. Joseph lived to 110, but hey, that's still a long, long life. And, uh, but Joseph saw that long and fruitful life. He saw his sons grow up and even his grandsons grow up. And what a blessing it is because I think that uh, as, uh, uh, as those uh, with kids, a lot of kids around us here and there, we love to see the kids grow up. We love to see them do well and excel and we love to cheer them on at the football games or the athletic events. So we love to cheer them on when they graduate high school or college and we cheer as they out there in the world applying for jobs and so on. And uh, uh, they might be our nieces, our nephews or kids from, uh, from uh, a church or whatever it might be. But we love to see the kids grow and excel in the things of the Lord, especially. Guys, Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely take care of you and bring you into the land, uh, to the land which he promised uh, on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, uh, uh, Now he charges his brothers as his, uh, his dad uh, did. Take me home. And, you know, again, uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph reassures them again that God will surely take care. Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely take care of you. You shall carry my bones up from here. Joseph died at the age of 110. He was buried and placed in a coffin. Uh, in Egypt. More, uh, 
more than a blessing is pronounced here, but it's, it is a promise of God to his people. I will surely take care of you. When you think about that, is it, is it just something that you say, oh, to somebody, oh, God's going to take care of you. It wasn't just a saying. It was just, just wasn't a way of saying, hey, aloha, you know, no worry, God's going to take care of or, or you, you could be like some people I know, oh, God takes care of the lolos. <laughs> but, you know, this is a promise to the children of Israel. God will surely take care of you. And he's taking care of the people, the children of Israel, for many, many centuries and many, many years, guys. And, you know, as we, as we look at our study uh, on Sunday mornings with the Arab-Israeli conflict, as we look upon the map, and I'm going to be ad adding to that map uh, for this Sunday, we're going to see the nation surrounding the tiny little nation of Israel. You can kind of think that what in the world is going on? Why would these people want to uh, go after I tiny little Israel? And uh, we'll see uh, again, uh, uh, and we rest on the promise uh, of God to his people, I will surely take care of you. Guys, you know, as God takes care of Israel, God will take care of us. As we go through the difficult times, we know that at times uh, uh, the enemy means, means it for evil, but God means everything for good, and God truly is still seated on the throne. And, you know, our, our thing is that we should exalt him and give him the honor and the glory, which is so rightfully his. Why don't we pray? Father God, we do want to thank you, Lord. What a tremendous study it's been through the book of Genesis, Lord. And we thank you, Father. We praise you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the promise that you're going to surely take care of your people, Lord. We receive that uh, in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you. Amen and amen.